Hey crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this project is the second in our series of our 30 day challenge to use the supplies that you have on hand. So please stay tuned for this great tutorial on a folded star hot pad. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. For today's project, I thought it would be a good idea to use up some of my fat quarters. I've got this cute little basket that I have out on display in my craft room right by my sewing table and I pick up fat quarters whenever they're on sale. And one of the um, packages that I like is I had picked up this cute package from Walmart. And we have been putting some things together for a, um, a second home that we purchased down in Arizona. And so I just love the cactus print. So I've already made one of these cute hot pads. Haven't quite got this one done yet, as you guys can see. I've got a little bit of hand stitching I need to do. But I just really, really like this star point um, um, ah, hot pad. I can't even talk today. Hot pad. And I've seen these before, but I've never tried to make one. So this is my take on making these cute um, hot pads. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut a whole lot of fabric. We're going to do a whole lot of pressing and then we're going to sew. So what you're going to need for this project is definitely some fabric and I've already cut out my fabric. So let's just go through. I'm going to move my fat quarters out of the way. Let's just go through exactly what it's going to take for this project. So the very first thing you're going to do is I picked out um, five different um, fabrics. And so I've got um, this cute little pink and as you guys can see kind of where the colors all pop in here. Okay, so I'll put this one off to the side a little bit so we can see it. So we've got the pink, I've got the cactus, I've got this teal, kind of an aztec -y, and then this darker gray. So let's go over the pieces of fabric you're going to need for this. So this first piece is what I call the scrap piece of material. Okay, it is not going to be seen. It's actually what we're going to lay all of our points on. So it's inside of here. You're never going to see it. So 10 by 10. Then I'm going to have a piece of 100% cotton batting. And a lot of times that I will use Insulbrite um, on my hot pads, but this is going to be so thick that I've chosen not to use Insulbrite on this, but you definitely could if you want to do that instead of this 100% cotton batting. And then you need a piece that is gonna be the back of your hot pad. So this is what I have for the back of my hot pad. Now, I'm measuring this with that salvage there. This is another 10 by 10 piece. I do want you guys to know though, when this is a finished product, this is going to be an eight by eight hot pad. So that's the size that I'm going for. Okay. So now what we want to do is let's go through all of the little squares. Now I've cut these all out just to save us all some time and I'll put all these different dimensions down below for you, but we're going to start out with, and I'll put my hot pad there so you guys can kind of see where I'm coming out with these colors. I've got four, squares at three inches and that's these squares right here in the middle then i have eight squares that are cut at three and a half inches and they're my second layer then i have my third layer is eight at four inches and that's this layer right here and then we have eight at four and a half and that's that last complete layer going all the way around then to top off the corners, I've got four that are cut at five inches. And then we have got, looks like I'm missing my little guys. I've got my little guys here. Got to find them. I just had them laying out. Um, I've got four more that are at three and a half. So I'll have to grab those before we get started. 
And then I'm just using salvage edges for my binding. This is actually two pieces, but what you're looking for is two and a half inches by 36 inches. So I'm gonna sew mine together to get my binding to go around. So that's what we're gonna start with. The very first thing we want to do is we want to lay out the design for how we're going to put this all together, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm gonna start out with my scratch piece of fabric and I'm gonna pull out my cutting board there for a second or my cutting mat and I wanna give this a good press. Now, one thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is that you've got your iron handy. We're gonna be doing a lot of pressing here, and I like to get the pressing out of the way for the whole project, and then it just sews together so quick. So let's go ahead and bring back that piece. What we're gonna do is we are going to measure halfway down, and that's why I've got my mat here, you guys, is we're going to create a layout for how we're going to put our um, triangles on once we get them constructed. So I know this is a 10 by 10 square, so I am going to go right like that. Whoops, didn't quite go with my pen. And I am using a fabric pen, so the minute I put my iron on this, this is going to disappear, although you're never gonna see this once we get this all done. Okay, so I'm gonna do five by five, right? Because I've got a 10 by 10 square. So I've got just a cross there, okay? Now you can buy um, uh, packets that already have this part all done, but I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to do this all on your own. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this because I don't have a long enough ruler, but I just want to go at another diagonal or a diagonal that way, and we're going from corner to corner, diagonal here. Oops, got to get that center. So we're doing exactly there, okay? So far, so good. We've done the cross and we've done the diagonal. Now what we want to do is we want to take our ruler and we want to make a mark at a inch and a half on each one of these. Okay, so you can use any type of ruler you have, but we're gonna do an inch and a half. And then what we're gonna do on each one of these points, we're gonna go out three quarters of an inch after that. And that is going to lay out our design of how we're going to lay these triangles down. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to say this is, let's do it the easy way, Lisa, with the ruler going the right direction. Okay, I'm gonna go at three quarters of an inch, and then I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch, and then I'm gonna go three quarters, and then I'm gonna go three quarters. And I'm just gonna do that all the way out. So three quarters, three quarters, got to use my head here, <laughs> um, getting these marked all the way out. So it's really important that you take the time to do this because this is what's going to set up all of your stars or your triangles as we lay them out. Okay, so, and I apologize you guys, I've had a few people comment that I say K a lot and I am trying so hard not to say that when I'm doing these videos, but when I've been doing it for as long as I've been doing, sometimes it's really hard to stop myself, so I really apologize if it frustrates you when I'm saying K all the time. Um, trying really hard to not say it. I know it bugs people. Never realized I said it so much until I watch back some of my videos and I definitely hear myself saying it. Okay, so I'm just taking the time to get through and mark each one of these. It takes a few minutes to do it. And this is one of the reasons why I think people buy the templates 
to do this part for you, but I'm all about saving money. And if I can mark this by myself and then um, save a little bit more money, maybe I can spend more money on my fabric. <laughs> I'm all for that. So we've got everything marked, okay? So as a reminder, this is an inch and a half out. In fact, you know what, you guys? I can just write that right there for you. That's an inch and a half out. And this is every three quarters of an inch, okay? So that would be the measurements that we did. So now what we're going to do is we are gonna start pressing all of our points, okay? Now I'm gonna press the first few for you guys and then I'm gonna go ahead and get them all done because it would be very repetitious if I just continue to um, do these and show them all to you guys. So I always like to give my fabric a good press. I also like to have more than one going at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead with these four and I'm gonna press them out really nice just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is you fold them in half. And this is why I like to have more ready to go. See how I'm, it's kind of like a little production line I've got going. And you want a good, good press on all of this fabric. Okay, so now, we have got them folded in half, right? Now this is the trick. Now we want to do them into a triangle. And so what I like to do is, sometimes this gets really hot with my hands, and so I like to get it set, and see how it's a nice, nice point. Let me see if I can give you guys a close-up view of that. It's a nice point, and what I like to do is slide my iron onto the end here and then pick it up that way. So let's do another one close up. So I'm just going to fold that with my fingers and see how I'm just got that and then slide it on. Oops, and these are hot, you guys. And that's it, we have got our first four stars, or first four triangles, all ready to go, okay? So now, see I caught myself again, you guys. I'm trying not to say it, but it's just how I talk. I'm so sorry. So as you can see, this is how our pattern is going to start to go together, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get all of these little guys pressed and then we will start putting them together on our other piece. So bear with me while I do a little bit of folding and pressing here. So all of my little stars are done. I keep calling these stars. All my little triangles are done and I've got them all pressed. So what we're gonna start doing now is we are gonna start assembling the hot pad with our cute little star. Now, I will tell you, there are a couple different methods that I've seen to do this, and I actually like the glue method the best. So what the glue method is, is I'm going to take my first point, my first triangle, and I'm gonna line it right up there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue stick and we're gonna sew later, but for right now, just to place this, we are going to put a little bit of glue right there to hold it in place. And then what I like to do is we are gonna take the opposite side, and this is why I really like having all of my folding done. Now, one thing I wanna bring your attention to is where my crease is right here, I'm matching that up with this line, and you've gotta be very precise with this. That's what makes your star look so nice. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go on the opposite sides. And again, I'm measuring that up, 
and that is coming right to where my inch and a half line was. So we've almost got our first layer done. And what I have seen other people do instead of using the glue like I'm using is they would take this to the sewing machine right now and they would sew all the way around. I find that by compiling it and putting it all together and then sewing it, that it works better. But you use the method that works for you. So now what we're gonna do is, remember how I did the three quarters inch out here? You wanna line up that with your center and you wanna line up your back with your three quarters. That, that first mark that we had. And you guys can play with the length on how much material you want to show through. I started out doing it with a half and I really like it with a three quarter because I think you get to see the layered um, effect of the fabric a little bit better. So I'm just coming out and I am just, all we're doing is layering. Now, remember this, this size, this size that I'm working on now, I've got eight of them. So I'm gonna, first you lay your four right on top of your last four. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some on the corners, okay? So what we wanna do is we still wanna make sure we're at that same three quarter and we wanna make sure that we're lined up right there. Very important to be precise about where your points are. So take the time and I always like to go opposites, opposite sides first. And then your layering is always the same on how one piece layers over the top of the other piece. I had two marks on that one, so I'm gonna make sure I get the right one. Now I know there's certain fabric glues you can use. Um, I could not find any fabric glue, so I am actually just using, this is Elmer's Extra Strength Craft Glue. I have sewn these um, with my sewing machine when I got done with it and everything came out fine and they wash up really nice too. So there's our second layer. See how it's all coming together? So now let's go with our four inch squares and again, you guys, it's the exact same process. Okay, so I'm going to line it up and I'm gonna do my next three quarters inch. And then I'm gonna go directly across from it with my next three quarters inch. And see how by doing the three quarter inch, I'm picking up a little bit more of my fabric you're able to see. You know, you go to all the trouble of picking out that perfect fabric, you want to be able to see it all. I love how these colors go together. I think it's a great southwestern theme, and it will be great for our new second home down in Arizona. So looking forward to getting down there and getting things. I've been making things like crazy um, for the, the new place. So once I get down there, I won't have my craft room. Um, so I got to make while I'm here. And, and it was so funny because my husband's actually the one that said, hey, Lisa, you need to make some hot pads for down at, we're calling it the cactus house. Um, so for the cactus house. And I knew I had this fabric on hand. So I thought, what a great thing. So see how that's really coming together, you guys? So now let's go with our four and a half inch squares. We're almost there. So again, it's just that same process. I'm gonna come out to my next three quarter inch mark. I'm gonna go the opposite side. I'm gonna line up my points. And this is the other reason why you want to make sure you've got a good press on this because it really helps when you're laying all of these down that you've got that good press on your fabric. I'm gonna add in those corners. Now, 
I've seen a lot of these where people um, do these as circular um, hot pad, which you absolutely can do. I personally like the square ones, but if you wanted to do a circular one, what I have seen people do is literally take a salad plate and lay over the top of this and trace out and then cut that way. If you are going to do a circular one, you might not need the extra, oops, I was going the wrong direction, can't talk and do this at the same time. You might not need the extra corner pieces that I'm adding on. But what I found is I needed those extra corner pieces to be able to cut what I, what I needed to cut. So now my, my bigger, my five inches are only going to go in the corners. Kind of caps it all off. Just taking the time to line that all up. This fabric was not part of my fat quarters. This was another swatch of fabric that I had. And I just thought it would be fun to pull in some more pinks because there's a little pink. So that is, um, keep dropping my glue stuff. That is not part of the fat quarters. But this is great for scrap fabric, you guys. Really great. Okay, so now I've got my last four. And what those are going to do is just cap off the corners again. I think it might have been off on that mark a little bit. That one seems a long ways away. So what do you guys think so far? You like this idea? Always wanted to try it. Pull that one back out. I guess it does need to go out to that mark. Okay. We have got the basis for it all put together. Now what I find here is just to hold these down, just add a little bit of glue there. Okay, let's move all of our sizes out of the way. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move that off to the side. I'm gonna bring in my cutting mat and I'm going to lay down the wrong side of my fabric and you know what I'm going to square this up a little bit because I did not do the best job of cutting this one. I realized that the last minute that I had forgot to cut a back piece. So let's go ahead and just square this piece up. So I know that it is 10 inches that I need and definitely is a little bit bigger. I always like to start with my back being a little bit bigger. That way you make sure you're not shorting yourself at all. And let's do this. Let's give this a quick little press with the iron. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that fabric and we've got it um, right sides down, so wrong sides up. Then I'm going to take my batting. I'm going to center it right on there. Then we're going to lift up. So this is where we're going to trim up our hot pad. We're going to get that all taken care of. So what I like to do is this is where that Let's see, it's layer one, two, three, four. Layer four is where we're going to square everything up to. So what we're going to do is... I'm going to just straighten this up as much as I can. And we are going to cut all through those layers. And I'm going to turn it. I find it's easier to cut and turn. 
and I'm just measuring, I'm lining it up with that right there and going straight. And we'll get rid of our scraps. And we're gonna turn it again. And we're gonna trim this side. And one last trim. Okay, so we have got our hot pad put together. What we need to do now, before we do the binding, what we're gonna do is, and I'll show it on this one a little bit more, and you can see it on the back maybe a little bit better, is we are going to what they call stitch in the ditch. So write down, see where our folds are? And maybe I can open this one up so you guys can see it. See where the folds are and I've got a stitch line there? We're literally gonna take this and stitch in the ditch. And so if you do it very slowly, you shouldn't see much of your stitch line at all. Then what I'm gonna do is I have found that if I come out to layer one, two, three, layer three, I'm gonna sew off these corners and it just helps secure the hot pad. So if I turn it over, you can see this was our stitch in the ditch, so four directions, and then that layer, um, what'd we say, one, two, three, four, I just do in those corner pieces, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch in the ditch, okay? So I'll meet you over at the sewing machine and we will get this sewn. Now I will tell you, you may want to just grab some clips, which is not a bad idea, and just clip. It should all stay together fine, but remember, we've got that bottom layer on now, and that bottom layer is not glued to anything. So this way, when you're taking it over your sewing machine, for me, it's right next to me, but if you're taking over your sewing machine and you've got to carry it someplace, sometimes it's nice just to make sure we're all nice um, and secure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a clip on each corner. So we're ready to go over to the sewing machine. We're gonna stitch diagonally and add a cross in the ditch. I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So as you can see, I've got the hot pad in here. What I like to do is I am measuring it up with my foot of my sewing machine. I've got my needle, let me put my needle in the center position. So it's in the center position and I've got a little line there. When you're stitching in the ditch, sometimes what I like to do is I like to put my needle down first so that I can make sure that I am in the ditch, okay? So then what I'll do is I'll then put my presser foot down. And sometimes what I'll do is as I'm sewing, I will separate out the fabric and then you want to come all the way down right through here, we're going to be sewing. Just wanted to give you guys a close up view so you really understood what I mean by sewing in the ditch. So I'm gonna try to move my camera so you guys can see me sew. And I will just have at it and I'll meet you when I get done with my first row and I can show you what it looks like. Okay, so we've got to the end. I'm just gonna go ahead and raise my needle, cut my string. And then I can give you guys a close-up view of what that actually looks like. And you can see on the back, all it was was a straight stitch. So I'm just gonna continue on sewing right through, stitch through the ditch, and I'll meet you when I'm done. So I'm back from the sewing machine and I finished all of my stitch in the ditch. Okay, I've got, come all the way around. And I also went ahead and I did the stitching around each one of those corners. So if I flip it over, you guys can see 
that that's where all my quilting shows up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the binding. So I went ahead and finished the hand stitching of this one and we're going to work on the binding. And what I have done is I have taken the piece that I had. I remember I showed you I had two pieces and I've already hooked it together. And what I'm doing to create my binding is first I ironed this piece in half and then opened it up and folded in and folded in half and pressed it. Okay, so I've got that done all the way through this piece. So the easy part now, or the last step we're gonna do, is we're gonna hook this, and I'm gonna use my clips. We're gonna hook this right on. So what I like to do is I like to start right on the straight part. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna clip it, and I'm gonna come along here and I'm gonna clip it. And then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine. I'm not gonna clip anymore. <coughs> Because at the sewing machine, I'm going to show you a trick on how we will, and I'll show you it here um, a little bit, and then we'll show you at the sewing machine. But I'm going to sew to just about a quarter inch away, and then what you do is you fold this up, and you fold it back down, so you're creating this little piece. And then what you're gonna do is sew and do the exact same thing and you're gonna go all the way around. That is gonna create these nice mitered corners for you in your hot pad, okay? So let's go ahead and hop over the sewing machine and I'll show you exactly how I do that over there. We're at the sewing machine and what I'm gonna do is I'm using my presser foot for my guide and I'm gonna go ahead and just start my stitch and I'm gonna do a quick back stitch, and then I'm just going to sew to just where I am about a quarter inch away from my corner. I just kinda of eyeball it, and I wanna get in there where I'm just about a quarter inch away and I'm going to go ahead and back stitch and I'm going to cut my thread. Okay, so I've cut my thread. And so I've taken it and I've cut off my thread and I wanna show you the next step. And the easiest way is to take it away from the sewing machine. So I've got it sewn to about a quarter of an inch next to my um, end and I'm gonna fold this backwards and I'm going to fold it up like that, okay? So it's kind of creating a triangle. Then I'm gonna bring it back down and I wanna make it straight so it's right down that corner. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip it for right now. And then I'm also going to clip a little bit further down because we're gonna be creating a straight stitch. And then this corner piece, we're going to do around each corner. But see how I create this little opening? That's what we're gonna to use to flip our fabric over. So let's go over to the sewing machine and I will sew. And the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do while I have it at the sewing machine but I wanted to give you guys a close-up view so you could see what it actually looks like. So I'm still gonna do that same using my press, presser foot to um, guide my, and I'm going to do a secure stitch, so I'm gonna back stitch, and then I'm just gonna stitch along. I've got this all the way done. So now what we'll do is we'll flip this over, all of my corners, and I've got these nice mitered corners now. And what we're gonna do is we are going to start clipping this. And so I'm just gonna take my little bucket of clips 
and I'm gonna clip all the way around. Now, if you guys want to, you can definitely machine stitch this back part of the binding on. I actually like to hand stitch this part. And on the back side, what I like to do is my miter's going, is folded right there. So I'm gonna do this one the opposite way. So where my pressing of my iron was, I've got this one up a little bit. Got to feel where I pressed at. And then I'm just going to fold that and you make that be a mitered corner on the back side. And I'll show you a close up of that as soon as I get this clipped. But see how I have a, the miter on that corner. And then I'm just going to continue clipping around and I'll do the same thing. So I'll show you that again. It's kind of hard because I've got the same kind of fabric. So I'm going to bring this down straight and then I'm going to fold it over and make that mitered corner. This is a little tricky here because this is my edge that I've got where my ending is, but it all works. So I clip it in place and then I'm going to clip this one in place. You'll catch that all when you're doing your hand stitching. Now, one thing I didn't do on this hot pad is to put a little hanger if you want to hang up your hot pads. I personally don't hang my hot pads up, so I don't normally put a little hanger, but you definitely could have. And you would want to add that before you put this binding in. Um, you would want to sew it in between with it. So we're just going to continue to clip all the way around finish off with my corners there and then I'm going to thread up some thread you guys and I am just going to hand stitch and that's what I did on the back of this one. I just hand stitched all the way around and we're going to end up with two hot pads. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that up and I will have a nice set of hot pads to take down to our new Arizona house. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think about this project. This is a great project for using up your um, material scraps or your stash. Just think of all the different colors you could put with this. So thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday.